Okay, but if you do register it, then you as a government have jurisdiction and control over the satellite. Now, the word control here is particularly important because any state can um, exert its laws over a satellite. They can say, for example, your satellite can't transmit signals into our state. Okay. Um, and, and you might be concerned about that, for example, as Iran yep. is about yep. broadcasting of BP, BBC signals into Iran. Okay. But only one state can actually exert physical control over a satellite. And okay. in order right. to, to, to have that right to exert physical control over a satellite, you have to be the state of registry. Okay. So um, then there, yeah. there's a question of what if a state doesn't register its satellites? And there are um, a surprising number of satellites up there that have not been registered by states. And it, is this intentional, unintentional, a bit of both? Kind well, of? It, it could be intentional to some, uh, to some extent, because on the one hand, while you, if you register the satellite, then you have jurisdiction control. Yep. On the other hand, by registering the satellite, you're, you're accepting a level of responsibility. Yeah, exactly, that's that right. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. And you may not want to accept <laughs> that level of responsibility. For interesting, that, okay. For that satellite. All right. So, so, so it is interesting, and, and there have been examples of that. Um, there have been examples where uh, satellites launched by um, Hong Kong, mm -hmm. um, ha the registry has changed hands. There's been an example, I think, where the, the Netherlands government has said they refuse to register it. They don't think they should be the state of registry. They're concerned about accepting responsibility for it. But um, mm. this could be a live issue, for example, if you're doing active debris management yes. and you're trying to take control of a satellite to move it from colliding with another satellite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a question of who has you know, uh, the ability to do that or the, the, the legal right to do that. There's also uh, obligations of co cooperation, mutual assistance and due regard. So um, that's manifested most obviously in somewhere like the International yeah. Space Station where um, uh, astronauts of a variety of countries do actually cooperate yeah. and mutually assist one e another. Even during some politically charged times, they actually do work quite well together. Right, yeah. right. Uh, and then there's an obligation of, of due regard that's somewhat similar, but it, it's not very well defined. Okay. So, so exactly what does due regard involve? And this, this next slide and the, the concept of harmful interference is also a manifestation of the lack of clarity about this sort of thing. All right. So, uh, there have been a number of instances where states have tested anti-satellite yes. missiles. And by testing anti-satellite missiles, they, they've um, caused a satellite to be destroyed, created a lot of space debris. Yep. You would think that that is not showing due regard for the space activities of other states. That's correct. You would think that that would be regarded as harmful interference with activities of other state parties in the peaceful exploration and use of outer space. And so there's, there's four countries that have done this now, right? Right, right. So, so Soviet Union or Russia have done that. Um, the United States has done that. India has done it and China has yeah. done it as well. So it's interesting, you know, the bigger space players who have a lot invested in space have also done this. I, yes. I always find this quite an interesting topic for a lot of reasons. Yes, yes, exactly. So right now there are discussions. The United States has made a unilateral commitment not to um, test destructive anti-satellite missiles, but then... That they've already done they, it. They, like, they've already like, done like, it. Sure. Oh, no one else should do it even though we already did it. Yeah, it's kind of, <laughs> I, I find that really uh, an interesting comment, yes. <laughs> right, but, 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 you know, hopefully yeah. it does lead to states generally committing to, to not testing any more destructive anti-satellite missiles. Yes. But if you had anticipated that something would cause harmful interference, then you'd be obliged to undertake appropriate international consultations beforehand. Okay. So you would think that, um, when, for example, Russia last year tested an anti-satellite missile, other states would have said, 
where were where was your prior international consultation? Consult yeah, exactly. You didn't tell us this. You didn't because after that test, I mean, there was a inherent unknown risks international space station, I right? Mean, fairly imminently, where they were put into the emergency capsules, and this was including Russian astronauts on the international space station. Russian right? astronauts themselves, yes. Um, so it was disappointing that that uh, governments did not explicitly say we think you've you've breached international law you should have consulted yeah, beforehand yeah. and there was an op there, there was an opportunity to do that so the fact that governments have not done that seems to undermine what harmful interference yeah. means and suggest that harmful interference would actually have to be a pretty high threshold threshold <laughs> um, if, if, if something like this doesn't count for harmful interference, then what, what does? does? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, so yes, there are important issues there. Now, the rescue and return agreement establishes a regime for rescuing any, any space object or, or astronaut within the state's jurisdiction. Um, this is an example from the uh, late 1970s, I think early 1980s, where a Russian satellite came down in Canada. Yep. The Canadians pursued the Russians for compensation in was, respect of It was this. a nuclear-powered satellite as well, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, the Russians at first said, no, not us, not our satellite. <laughs> and then, then the Canadians and the Americans said, we're going to go ahead and collect the parts. Uh, Very yeah. soon after that, the Russians said, well, actually, it might be ours. <laughs> we will collect the parts. Uh, by which time Canada and the United States said, it's okay, we've got it, we'll just send you the bill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and eventually Russia did pay something, but not quite as much as Canada would have liked. So, yeah, so, so I'm interested by that. So Canada assessed the value based on, I guess, their national law about what the impact was? Uh, kind to, of? to some extent, national law would have come into it. But really, I, I think the figure was something like uh, 30 million Canadian dollars. And, and that was the cost of 40, cleanup. 45 years ago. Yeah, okay, so that's a cleanup cost. Yeah. Right, right. And then Russia didn't pay all that? They didn't pay all of that. Uh, there, there was some diplomatic uh, you know, negotiations. I'm not sure all of yeah, the yeah. elements of those diplomatic negotiations, but it may have been, well, if we don't pay all of it, how about, you know, we, we, we come to some... Uh, agreement in some other ways. We won't insist on something else in another yeah, yeah, context. Yeah. There's but the, but then Canada and the U.S. were obliged to return the satellite to Russia. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Although it doesn't say how long they have to return it. You know, they can take their time and have a very good look at it beforehand. Interesting. If they wanted to. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it doesn't give that. So they have to do it at some point, but that some point is ill-defined. That's right. Okay. That's right.